Cherry's World Podcast. My man is home. Mr. Darius McQuarrie is going to be in the house today. We are going to talk about his new album, Scars and Stripes. We're also going to talk about 2020 and how this year is working out for everybody. How you are handling quarantine and just the state of the world, race relations, politics, relationships, children, and so much more. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. Also, we're going to answer some of those fan questions that people had for Darius and I. You were singing this shit, and I was like, oh. I was. I was about to say, you are everything, and everything is you. Okay. Oh, you are everything, and everything is you. Oh, you everything, and everything is you. That's what I want to. That's what I want to tell you. That's how I was feeling. And I need you to sing for me again, so that they can. <laughs> and I have. I have proof that my baby sings to me all the time. <laughs> I've been singing to you since I was a, a young man. <laughs> you are everything. Hey, 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 wait a minute. I don't want to sing to you. You don't want to sing. You don't want to sing to you. I want to say, you may not have diamond in the back, sun <laughs> roof top, <laughs> gangster sleep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See, see, gangster white walls. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, that's classic so, right there, boy. Hey, hey, man, I gotta say to you, black man, we gotta move on up. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, we moving on up. Hey, man, are we? Are, is the show started? Because I gotta give you a compliment, man. Hey, every twenty twenty has been kind of messed up for a lot of people, but not for you. You've been acting your ass off, man. Me and my wow. wife just finished watching. And I'm about to mess the name of the, 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 the show. We watched the whole thing in three weeks. Monogamy. Monogamy. We just watched the whole thing. And let me tell you something. That is, that show is, it got, you, you name it. It's crazy. It's funny. It's sexy. All type of, I can't wait for the next season. Because I'm like, man, what what is about to happen next? I don't know wow. where y'all at, man. Wow. And then, and then wow. you And then you playing James Brown. On BET. Wow. Come and on, that was man. a blessing. Now, that was a blessing, man. man um, let, me, let me just say, you acted your ass off, man. You pulled you. that off, man. Thank you. Thank you so, brother. I really appreciate that, man. Now, that, meant, that, that means so much to me coming from a real one. Um, you know, it, it's an honor when we get to, um, to, to honor those who have opened, kicked in doors for so many of us. You know, um, JB... You know, Mr. Brown, as everybody called him, he did so much um, um, unimaginable uh, for us, man. We're still reaping the benefits of sacrifices that James Brown made, man. We can't even fathom them because we are spoiled, man. Us, these, these black folks that are alive today, us, man, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say it myself sometimes too, but, but I check myself. You know, it's a song Ice Cube made, Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself. One of my favorite songs ever, man. A lot of these young cats that call themselves hip-hop aficionados, go study that record. Go study that record. You know, uh, because a self-check will save a life. Yeah. And um, I check myself often because I remind myself, Nat King Cole performed in venues where he wasn't allowed to walk through the front door. I have to remind myself that Louis Armstrong was given a film credit, making him the first credited African-American on, on film because his friend, Bing Crosby, said, hey, this is my friend Louis. He's an amazing guy. He's a brilliant entertainer, and he's going to get this credit, and you're going to put his name in the credits. If not, he and I are going to be on the, go the golf course playing golf, and you guys can go fuck yourselves. That's what Bing Crosby said, and that's how that went down. So. I, I'm, I'm, I love to self-check myself, but a lot of us, we don't have that discipline. We don't have that focus. We don't have that concentration. Um, oh, hey, hey, baby. 
we have to remind ourselves that there have been so many sacrifices made throughout the years, and uh, people like James Brown, people like um, well, Marvin Gaye made a lot of sacrifices, but before him, um, you know, uh, I have a family member, James Blackman, who was one of the first African Americans to ever be on the film. Mm. He didn't get the credit. He didn't get the credit. Um, um, I'm sorry, Don Blackman. Don Blackman. Um, that's my family, my blood. Really, my last name cool. Blackman. Man, we all, we all, we all can one way, some, some way or another. We, 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 we just don't recognize it. We just don't, we don't realize it. But we all can. This is that. It's okay. I'm allowed to sexually come out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> She says she's better. <laughs> um, then he made us go through this like sexual harassment course the last couple of years of government. I guess maybe because we finally yes. came they, they saw the film. next to each other. And I just looked over and I said, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's <laughs> like, I'm oh, sorry too, boo. And the, the whole like, because <laughs> we were sitting there with attorneys, you know what I'm saying, from Warner Brothers, <laughs> who were giving us this lecture. And Darius and I are just sitting next to each other, like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Nah. And he got right. those sweatpants. I'm yeah. so tired of being alone. I'm so tired of on my own. Help me, girl, just as soon as you can. People say that I found a way to make you say that you love me. Hey, baby, baby, go for that. Uh, that's a natural fact. Hey, that I want to come back. Show me where it's at. Baby, <laughs> Hey, I you got to have a little out green. You got to have a little out green every once in a while. <laughs> so what can't you do, brother? What can't you do? Oh, man, you know what? The one thing I'm starting to realize is that I can't, I, what I can't do is I can't save the world, man. Mm. And, and it's unfortunate, but I think that the more that we recognize that we can only save who we can and we can only do what we, what we were really created to do, I think the greater we'll become at doing just that. And that's my whole thing, man, to this point. And that's why I'm so excited about this, uh, this song that we released called Scars and Stripes. Yeah. Um, I mean, like we're talking about, you know, me releasing music and putting some stuff out. Well, you know, I always wanted to have something to say. You know, I didn't want to be a, a part of a, a certain, uh, uh, and I'm not going to say generation, but I didn't want to be a, a part of a group that, that came out that was self serving. Um, I think that self service is something that's very important because if you're not strong, yourself then you become a weak link in chain and so uh i think it's important for us to strengthen ourselves but it's very important to remember that we are all one and we're all connected and so this scars and stripes uh we just did a, a, a scars and stripes video uh challenge where I, I wanted editors to take whatever goes through your mind and i wanted editors to create a video uh to this song and so um, we just released it, uh, a Tectonic Media, um, the McCrary Group um, with Heritage Music Group. Um, we released this, this, this song. We got a whole lot more music that's going to be coming. You know, the McCrary is like a, like a, a musical uh, and creative army. <laughs> you know, we like the Jacksons, but everybody can do something. <laughs> God, I don't know why I got all these songs in my head right now. Sing them. Okay. No, bro, don't get me started. <laughs> I got focus on Stars and Stripes. I'm so excited about this because, you know, um, I've had the pleasure of being blessed by some of the most amazing musicians. Like, I'm talking about, like, you just don't get to sit and spend time with these cats and just draw. And, um, I mean, I'll never forget when I was writing Stars and Stripes, I was composing, um, uh, and El DeBarge came in the studio. We were working on a few things. And El, I pulled up the track, and I was just so proud of what I'd done. It was a really grueling process. I mean, I'm really, I'm really 
really went through a lot to get this record done. Um, and, and, you know, um, I pulled it up and L listened to it. He didn't say anything. He listened. And um, after it went off, I thought that I was like, damn, like, did I end him? And so he was like, um, play it again. <laughs> and so we listened again, played it again. And again, it went off. He didn't say anything. He said, um, let me hear it one more time. He listened a third time. And then once it was over, when it was done, he went to his keyboard and turned around and he found his sound. And he started to talk to me about my process. And he started asking me what inspired the song and why did I use the chords and what was it? And I just basically said that in this country, we have been handed some of the worst circumstances, some of the worst conditions, some of the worst treatment that you could give a living human or a living a dog, a, a living individual, and 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 we made we made magic out of it. We made magic, and and he said, I'm, "I got something for you. Just just record this for me." And he started playing, and I'm just sitting here like, "Oh my God, this is El Bar, y'all. <laughs> this is El Bar, y'all. <laughs> oh my God, you know." And then he said, "It, it kind of feels like ragtime, doesn't it?" I said, rag time, yes, it feels like it's rag time because we were giving rags to our times, yes. And we just start jamming. And then the next thing I know, Angelo Moore from Fishbone, uh, one of my, another one of my greatest mentors. Uh, just one, I mean, this man is just so amazing. And you look at, there would be no, no doubt if it wasn't for Fishbone. I mean, so, so many groups have come and spawned from this group. Angelo said, he said, you know, I know what you're hearing for these horns. He said, but you know, man, you know, he said, you, you might want to just let me just put all saxophones on this thing. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. I said, it's, you know, saxophones are kind of sad, man. And, you know, they're kind of melancholy, man. You know, if you, if you put too much on the top, it's going to be too bright because I know what you're going for, you know. And um, and so we ended up just having um, Angelo Moore put a full saxophone section on the song. And it just started to come together. Like, um, that's the, legendary. You know, the process of this whole project, like, I just like, I, I mean, and it's just so crazy when when these musicians who raised me, when I show back up after studying to show myself approved, and they like, yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm going to tell you, woo, Uncle T was in the whole thing. It's so crazy. It's just so crazy. It's, 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 uh, it's a spiritual experience right now, and um, we're coming into a spiritual awakening right now. Um, and a lot of us are unsettled and we're wondering what's going on. We're in, a, in, a, in an era of awakening, and awakening is not always comfortable. You want to stay asleep because that sleep feels so good. Whatever you may have been dreaming about, whatever it was that you may have been meditating about, those of us who aren't really sleepers, we're more meditators, whatever it is. Feels good, but 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 it's 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 time, it's it's the time of awakening right now, and that's what the scars and stripes is about. It's about awakening, recognizing and realizing uh, what we've been through and the sacrifices that have been made, and understanding that there is no home for the free, and there is no land for the brave. They killed the brave, and um, and um, you know. Free ain't free. Freedom ain't free. You know? So, um, and, 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 and we're seeing that, that it's costing lives, uh, you know, uh, right now, where freedom is concerned. You know? So, that's what this is. It's time for us to go ahead and wake up. So, you talked about Uncle T, right? Yes. I had a meeting with the media. Um. And I don't want to change the subject, but I had a meeting with the medium a few weeks ago and the phone kept hanging up and the phone kept hanging up. And I was like, oh, my God, somebody doesn't want to talk to me. And she said, no, it's absolutely the contrary. She said, the problem is there's so many people trying to talk to you is the energy. And what they do is they start messing with technology. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny, but you just said 
Uncle T was in your sessions. I'm telling you, today is the first time we've been recording for a full year and we've had no technical technological difficulties. Today has been full of technical difficulties. I have wow. it here. Wow. Your sound sounds okay now. Wow. Wow. So so for you guys listening, if you guys don't know, um Uncle T um Cherry's uncle, my uncle, um was one of my greatest musical teachers, um just a musical genius. Uh, and it's hard for me to even, he, he, he's passed on, and it's hard for me to even talk uh, about him, about him emotional, because um, it's just so much that I was able to learn, um, you know, from this master who you guys don't know. And that's the thing about us and our illustrious and rich history. Um, as, as black people, as uh, African Americans, there's so many of us who are so great, who've been so great, who we don't know. We don't know. And we don't know all that is with us right now. We don't know. We have no clue of all of those who've sacrificed, those who've gone on to become ancestors on the other side that are pushing us right now. Yeah. And um, we got a serious platform. And uh, you know, um, that's why it's important for, for me when I have the opportunity to to, to portray um, an ancestor like James Brown. I, I have no choice but to represent him, to show out. Uh, I mean, this is the man that taught us to say about Black my crowd back then. You know, um, one of the things about Stars and Stripes is that I wanted to show that we've been marching for a long time. You know, um, the only thing they're not doing right now is seeking dogs on us, but they, which they still are, and turning hoses on us right now. But everything else is the same, same thing. Um, these these deaths that are happening uh, at the hands of police are, are not new. The cameras are new. You know, and this is not me, you know, telling anybody to sing a song and pick up the tambourine and start singing and stop this is. This is me saying that it's time to wake up and for us to recognize and understand that, you know. Um, you know, making these songs and these videos about your jewelry and your Bentley and your this and your that, like, it's not serving anyone. It's not helping anyone. In fact, this industry, if you know, if you really know the, the history, uh, because my thing is, I encourage everyone who wants to get into this industry to do your homework um, and to find out why entertainers started entertaining. Most people don't know that a lot of entertainers started entertaining because we were tired of having to entertain in other ways. I'm Explain. going to say it again. What you mean? So instead of us being in these uh, rural areas where we were uh, pimped, where we were human, uh, part of the human trafficking rings, and we had to give up our bodies and we had to sacrifice, we asked if we could sing for our meals. Yeah. We asked if we could entertain for our supper. And so basically, that's why um, the Holy True thing was uncovered, because there were a lot of women who had to, and men, who had to give their bodies to be in front of the camera. There was a sacrifice that was made. There were a lot of us who had to give of ourselves to have your voice recorded. It wasn't just handed to you because you were talented. Mm -mm. Why do you think that they had favorites? And then there are some of us who were blessed, you know, to have been shielded and we may not have had to go as far to do certain things, but it was still a sacrifice. We, not, we, we know not the sacrifices of those who we criticize, those who we chastise, we don't know the sacrifices that were made because no one is going to just hand you this opportunity. It is an opportunity, but this stuff comes from a very deep place. And so for us to disrespect it by, you know, riding down the street, ghost riding the whip with, with, the, with the this and the that, and the, I mean, you have to ask yourself, why are those the videos that are promoted? Why? 
you know, you, you don't see Corner uh, or Chicago or 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 the Rolling Stones. Uh, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. You don't see Rod Stewart. None of that. With any of that stuff attached to Bob Dylan, attached to any of that stuff. Freddie Mercury was given a golden ticket. One of the most talented voices that we we seen, but he was an only gay artist. Give him a golden ticket. Then then they came back years later and made a movie about it. Yeah. Then they followed it up with Rocket Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, I I, I I dealt with some artists before, and you know what's disrespectful? No, I'm not. But no, I, to me, I, I just when I when I listen to how you got knowledge on all sides of music. And I was dealing with somebody before who had never heard a Beatles song, Imagine. I'm like, bro, how, how, how you don't know that? Like, to me, it, if you're gonna be in this business, like for me, I, I like doing podcasts and radio. I right. gotta know about Delilah. I gotta know about Doug Banks. I gotta know about Tom oh. Joyner. I gotta know, like oh. what, you, what you just said, man, that's, if you don't know that stuff, that you you disrespecting the business, and that's why I appreciate I appreciate that, man. Wow, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ken. You know, I'm, I'm gonna say this: the whole thing is about learning, acquiring as much knowledge as we can, because every door that we walk through, it's our job to either leave it off the hinges or to leave the crap for somebody else to walk through. That's our job, man. You know, uh, I, I, I say it all the time. I tell Cherry, I, 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 I know so many little black girls that are in the industry to this day because she she is still iconic. You know, um, there was nobody else for little black girls to look at. And the headbands, that's her. She did that. That's her essence, her soul. Hey, man, you, you know, know what? I didn't think about that. I'm so glad we got you back on for a second. I think you are our first, second, like, uh, times, I don't know, repeat guest. But I'm so, I, I never thought about it. I've been a fan of hers forever. And I and I never thought about that. And it made me think, I'm like, let me go back to 1984. What black women were on, what black girls were on TV? I think it was just Tootie and Cherry. I mean, Tootie, Kim That's Fields good. and Cherry. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Okay, you're right. No, you're right. That's out. You got to you pay homage. You're right. Janet did what she did. She did. But I'm going to say this. She was a Jackson. So she's kind of not fair. But she was talented in her own right. Yeah. Okay, but but you're right. But it was. It was, it was Janet. It was, it was Kim and you. That's all black women. That's all these little black girls had to look up to. That's crazy. And each other, you were like, so fly with your style and the way, you, the way you did it. And then it was so crazy because, see, back then, we didn't have social media and all this other stuff for people to speak up, so we couldn't even hear the voices. We couldn't even hear the voices of the people. Danielle. What was Danielle? What's Danielle's last Danielle name? Danielle Spencer from Yeah. From yeah. what's happening. But she came on she, but she came on in the seventies though. Yes. Okay, I was gonna say I got yeah. her on the She was too. a little girl in the seventies. Nah, for real though, but that's right, though. You're right, you're right. You're right. She, she, she kicked yeah. in the door. She kicked in the door. I'm gonna tell y'all how deep this is. I posted this this thing of, of big shots uh, for reason uh, of myself recently because I wanted I'm hoping that somebody sees the through line. How old were you when you realized that Scam, the little streetwise boy from Chicago, and Eddie Winslow was really cousins because they was both from Chicago? Uh. How old were you when you realized that? But guess what? They knew that because they was getting mad by dollars. Yep. It was a game. So here you got me going in, playing a guy that I, I, I get this audition. They already knew what they was going to do. Yep. That is so true. And that's how they make the connections. And Let's, that's how they make the connections. Can we go back to your album? Yes. Like, you are always ahead of the game. You're like a Martian, right? So you seriously, you've been working on Scars and Stripes before this George Floyd, before this whole like new revolution took place. And people don't know that. Like this is not something that this man created just because of the temperature of the earth right now. 
Like you already were ahead of the curve. How do you always stay ahead of the curve like that? It's God. It's God, Cherry. I mean, you know, you know, you know how I mean, no matter what my battles are, no matter what I go through, you know how spiritually grounded that I am. You know, uh, on some on some weirdness to most because a lot of people don't understand that we are not humans having a spiritual experience. We are spirits having this human experience. So the human side of things was foreign. And um, all I can all I can say is I will continue to listen to the voice of God to guide me to complete my mission. And those who hear me, I promise there's something there for you. There's something there for you to grasp, for you to get to, to your next evolution, to your next elevation. I promise. Uh, because in listening to those like Miles Davis and listening to those like Marvin Gaye, you know, who, who what was going on? Uh, and, and which is the album is it's it's uh, it's scarily relevant to today when you listen to Make Me Wanna Holler when you listen to Mercy Mercy Me um, you know and I think that that's part of being an empath as well um, sometimes you know uh, uh, it's been said that a prophet is without honor in his own home you know people just get used to oh you know he's just always talking like that man he just you know. I wonder how long, you know, uh, if, you know, Moses had to try and get people to understand, yo, this is shit that's about to go down, you know. So I think it's just a matter of listening to God, and we all, we all have that ability to to talk to the God in us. Um, it's just that a lot of us sometimes we don't listen to the God in us. So. Um, you know, um, that's what Scars and Stripes was. Um, it was, you're right, it, it happened way, way before all of this. And, you know, um, I, I just, I just got tired. I just got tired early on of seeing it. And, 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 um, and, and I'm going to tell you this, guys, um, you ain't seen nothing yet with COVID, with everything else. November is going to be rough if we don't figure it out. We don't figure it out soon. We don't start start you know really making sure that we're economically sound, um, and we're and we're uh, we have some some economic substance, um, and we're able to uh, to to sustain and keep our our wealth in our community. It's gonna be a problem. Yeah. What do you think um, is part of the solution of keeping? Black economical wealth. What is it that well, these people? I, I think that one of the, uh, the one of the ingredients is um, for us to understand the true meaning of ownership. Ownership starts with owning you first. It's not owning things. These things are not going to get them to, to respect you anymore. That they're, they're not going to to uh, get them to say, oh, this is a, a, a respectable person because he drives this Bentley, or this is a respectable person because of this chain around his neck or her neck or these diamonds. It's not it. You are the prize. We're the prize. And I think the more that we begin to value the ownership of ourselves, the more we will begin to value each other. And that's the first key. And then that's where the trust uh, uh, is, is developed. And then from there, we can go external with the dollar and work on keeping the dollar between ourselves. Once we have that trust, it's just like back in the day. They had juke joints and they had all types of ways of communicating before you cell phones and everything. I mean, you know, it was cold back in the day. We was cold. Hey, I'm shutting down for real. Like, yo, we sorry compared to the OGs back in the day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, man, yo, we ain't, we ain't doing we ain't doing nothing compared to them back back in the day. You know, I mean, it's like even now when when I even look at a lot of the the, the, the entertainment, like I'm like I, like I, I keep going back to it. And I'm saying like, 
Yo, Cherry, you was swagged out on NBC, baby. <laughs> swagged out. We, we had the same we had the same agent, and here I am. I, we tell the story, you know. I'm this this young little chick I, I did my, my, my little movie, Big Shots, you know, wasn't wasn't no no little flag boy started a movie. I, I was like, I'm gonna marry her. <laughs> But this is black royalty. And you did it. <laughs> hey, this is black royalty. Okay? <laughs> but I'm saying that to say, Josephine Baker. I'm saying that to say, you know, uh, uh, um, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, Lil Walter. I'm saying that to say, like, there was Chuck Berry. I'm saying that to say, there's so many that have gone on and so many we don't know. Yes. So many don't know. Yeah. You know, Darius, you guys just touched on something. After you did your interview, we've got so many responses, so many questions. People are so nasty. So, <laughs> I tried to answer some of them by myself, but I thought this was a great opportunity maybe for you to answer some of them too. One of the biggest questions I always get is, do you know he was with Superhead? Hey, hey listen, I'm going to tell them like this. Y'all not been to Will and Jada us. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something else too. I will no longer bring relevancy to uh, the irrelevant. Mm. So, you know, um, Taken. Well, I'm like, of course. Oh, like, I like her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and listen, you know, something called casualties of war. You know, um, you know they, love, this, 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 they, this, love they love. They love the cat. They love. They love the cat. We do. Them. We do. We do. With black folks, that's this part of what keeps what keeps us alive. I mean, it does, unfortunately. But I think that if we start to focus on the positive and and on the things that we need to focus on, I think that we won't won't miss the things that we need. Because we'd be missing shit like a motherfucker. Yeah, absolutely. One of the <laughs> other questions that hey, I hey, hey, we've missed all kind of lifelines and everything. We've been talking about how to pitch in credit. We've been talking about we don't want to hear that. We probably, and we talk about what this one did yesterday. Hey, hey, cuz, hey, hey, you see, uh, 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 hey, and look, and these brothers are just as bad as the women these days. Hey, 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 you know what? Hey, you know, I'm, 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 yeah, I, 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 yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Right. That, that's the stuff that they like. But one of the things that I did like that came to me, and I answered it, but now I want you to answer it. They said to me, when did you know that you loved him? And I smiled and I, I wrote back at the Magic Kingdom when we sat next to each other. Uh, that was that was so that was so amazing. Like it's like those that, that moment was just so special. It's like um you just don't get those those types of moments, especially in, in, in black Hollywood. Like it's just that was like so amazing um and you just know you know um you know um that you got life you know and and it was it was it was amazing i i just i knew at that point i was like oh we, we got life and how old were you how old were we was 13 yeah 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 you know but once again that's what happens also too when you know that you're on a charted, a charted course as well. You know, um, I mean, all of the amazing stuff that you're, that, you're, that you're doing, I mean, I knew back then that I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew then that this was a part of it for you. Um, I didn't know I was gonna play James Brown. I mean, I really didn't. Um, but I'm not gonna even sit there and say that. Um, <laughs> But well, I remember we knew, it, we knew it would be special. We knew, we knew, you know, back back then, and that's what our connection has always been. I mean, it's just I could talk to you about anything comfortably. You never judge me. Um, you know, I mean, this is this is who we are. You know, and and 
um, once again, um, spirits having a human experience, this is what we both agree to, you know, and when you find that you are comfortable in understanding and recognizing it, you know, um, and, and I think that's one of the things that animals have that humans allow their intelligence to get in the way of. Definitely. Okay. And the last one. Deep. I'm sorry. <laughs> now he's getting deep tonight, boy. He got man. You are getting a lot of that. We had we just talked to a life coach, and you you like picking up right where he left off. <laughs> and that's what that's what this show is about. You know, people know these characters, and they don't know the people behind them. And for me, it's so important that when we leave today, people don't say, "Oh, Eddie Winslow," or "Oh, the guy who Brown," or "Girl with Girl." Like, I want them to know Darius McQuarrie. When he's not on camera, he's on camera. But when he's when he's home, when he's chilling, the man that he is, um, they ask me who's the better cook. Yeah. Oh, you go down. No, 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 no. Some things, some things I'm all right with. But sure, you know you be doing your thing, girl. <laughs> Undeniably. Yeah, yeah. You are for the best, girl. <laughs> Yeah, my mama could cook. Your mama could cook, but the kitchen ain't even my favorite place. Like, I, we ain't even going for it. You all sitting in there right now. Sure, you said you make homemade pizzas. Yes. I, do not. I don't want my people eating out. It's not because I enjoy it. <laughs> well, I, I do enjoy cooking. I do. Cooking to me is like making music. You know, um, you have to have all the right ingredients. Um, you have to have uh, to make harmony. You know, uh, flavors should be harmonious, um, and, and it is like soul food. And, and if you listen to a lot of music today, unfortunately, we become so uh, comfortable with just pulling up a sound or sampling a sound, we don't even understand that a lot of the musicians who play for years would tune that instrument, and they knew and they do know still by ear what vibration that, that intonation brings you once you hear it, which is why... Those of us who aren't even musicians, when we hear it, it's wrong, we just cringe. Just like, that ain't right, that's wrong, no. Even when somebody's singing and they sing the wrong note, it's like, that ain't right, no, not allowed, what you doing? <laughs> but, but, no, but, but then there are those, we got other gifts, we, some of us got other gifts, but, but the, that, that, that's why it is so important when you're cooking to make sure you're cooking with love. So I love to cook with love, and, and, and music for me is, is is like a recipe, you know. Well, what you listening to uh, in, from today in today's era? Is there, any, is there anything that like just? Oh man, I, I love um, I love what's uh, Post Malone. Uh, I, I, I like uh, I love Usher, man. I love what Usher's done. Yeah, still, Usher's I still hands down. He's just impressive. I love Chris Brown. Um, you know, uh, Jermaine Dupree is, is, is a great producer. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I like um, uh, DJ Paul. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I listen to a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, Trey songs yeah. I mess with. I'm um, still an Eminem fan, uh, hands down. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm going to give you all this example. The music of today, a lot of it is like just pulling up and ordering something at a drive through window versus when your mama was in the kitchen and you smelled all the good smells coming and you, you didn't know what she was doing, but you saw stuff going in the oven and slowly but surely stuff would start coming out and it would just pop up and it would be ready and you'd be looking and steam was coming off of you. You was like, damn, I'm just going to take this thing. Oh, now you got macaroni and cheese and you got cabbage and you got smothered tan. You got cracker bread. You got fish and bread. Oh, you know, oh, it's going to be on the It's going to feel like you ain't round. Yeah. And you want to get down. You know, that's that's uh, a lot of lot of what it is. So, you know, um, I, I subscribe to you know, a lot of little bit sharing um, yeah. sometimes, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, today, a lot of great artists who are doing some great things. Uh, that point back to a lot of uh, a lot of the artists like Marvin Gaye, who, um, you know, um, you know, Robin Thicke, 
I love rocking. He's soulful. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's 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 some of this stuff today as much as I can. <laughs> hey, can you can you can you give us a little tease or tell us what's going to happen next season on uh, Monogamy? Oh man, um, Craig Ross Jr.'s Monogamy is such an interesting um, show. I can't really speak on that show okay. too much, um, but we will see. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll see what, what Craig has in store for everybody. Awesome. Yeah. Peaks. Can you tell us what we are looking forward to with the rest of the album? When will the whole thing be released? Well, um, <clears throat> this album, this album, I'm, I'm just going to have fun with this project, you guys. Like, seriously, I'm just going to keep releasing them because I got a gang of them. It's, it's, it's been stored up through the years. It's like sexual frustration. And I'm about to like really just a lot of let you have it in every which way, every angle. I mean, the chair, you know how long I've been working on this stuff. You know, I, I mean, what, what, what I've been doing. Um, and it's just, it's just about, you know, now being able to have a creative freedom and uh, working with the right people who understand uh, that the artist that I am. And um, we're just going to drop them um, single by single and, um, EP by EP, we're just going to just describe it. It's all very politically and socially conscious um, music. Um, I was just blessed. Um, George Clinton, um, who's one of my greatest mentors, uh, taught me so much. God, Dr. Funkenstein himself. Um, we just we just put something together that is amazing. I mean, he, he went back into Dr. Funkenstein for me. Mm. <laughs> it's incredible. July yeah. is that day still a special no, day? No, Stars and Stripes is actually it's it's up and it's out now. It's out now. Um, July thirteenth, we will be dropping. We will be dropping. Yeah, we got something else to be working on. Yes, um, but Stars and Stripes is up now. Yeah. Where can they find it? Everywhere, everywhere, guys. It's, uh, every music uh, musical platform is it, it, is up and it's, it's out now. I go download it. Um, it's uh, it's everywhere. Yeah, and, and it's gonna be everywhere. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Oh my and god! It's and fine. I, I love you, and um, I, I couldn't do what I do. I couldn't do it without you. I couldn't. Thank you for just supporting me the way you can do. This is a question that I was supposed to ask you the first time we had on. Had you on? Yes. So I don't know if you know this, but sometimes I'm on the uh, Cherry's World podcast Instagram page, and one time I'll say I just be happen to get off and just watch an old show. Uh, what's happening now? And I and I saw you on there, and I recorded it, and I uploaded to the Instagram stories, and I sent it to you. Then I deleted it. I said, this is so corny. But I was like, but it was such a dope episode, man. But I said it yeah, to you from... I think I did. I, I think yeah. I did. <laughs> it, was such a, it was a good episode, man. I, I really enjoyed that. That's how far back we go. Yes, man. Yeah. Um, and once again, that story, that story, um, Ernest Thomas, yeah. he actually was able to get that show back on the air back then because of the fans. Because right. that was what's happening now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was able to go and get that produced because of the fans on social media. Like, this shows you how under service we are in the African American community. How there are people that, 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 that we want to see, but they only give us the four or five that they want us to, to see out front. But Ernest Thomas, when did that, much, I, and I, I tell him every time I see him, I say, Thank you, man, because there is no me without you. Couldn't be no Eglinzo without Raj. Yeah. Absolutely. It's real, man. So that was an honor for me to be a part of that. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot for making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you do you remember that era? Like, do you like do you remember what studio? I like. I'm a nerd for that stuff. Do you remember what studio was at? Like, um, it, it was a, it was a small private studio. Um, it wasn't even like a big studio, man. Where they were, it was like this was like they, they did it. Um, I think I want to say Alan Dershowitz was at the head of the Universal at the time. They didn't even do it over at Universal. They did it off some little offshoot. It was like, like a private thing. Yeah, and I do remember. It. Um, Anna, Anna, Anna Maria was 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 one of Anna Maria Orchard. Um, Anna, Anna Maria. 
um, was, was um, brought on his wife's life. Um, Shirley and Bell was there. Um, they had brought back the, the, the cast. Yeah. And, mm. and, 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 and he did that to his credit. Yeah. Wow. So we had, uh, we had Kelly on a few episodes ago. And yes. she didn't, hey, check this out. She didn't remember that you actually played a cop at the end of Family Matters. She was like, Darius was a cop? But <laughs> yeah, she was a cop. Because you know my favorite episode, right? Because this is the, my, I don't know if I told you this, my favorite episode is the one where Cherry was dating a dope boy and she was running packs and then Laura told, right. Yeah, you had to go and you made the bus and you weren't even yeah, really. Real, hey, hold, on, wait, hold on. How real was, was Family Matters, y'all? Like, like Cherry, like, they don't even understand. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a family matter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how real was we? And, like, and, and, and then we never even got credit, like, for being that real, but we did get the street credit because. You still, to this day, people talk about the show and the relevance, but I mean, that's because it touched so many people, you yeah. know, in the right place. But I mean, God, like, those stories, like, that's just, they don't even do they don't even doing no stuff like that on TV today. Well, when, <laughs> when we need it, when, when we need it. Your racial profiling has popped back up, like, on my feed at least twice a week. I mean, and that's, that's back. Then before, you know, uh, I mean, all these cell phones, like I said, ain't none of this stuff the only thing that's new is we recording it now. That's the only thing that's new, you know. But um, Kelly's so funny. Um, I think that at that point in the show, uh, I think everybody was just kind of like, okay, just give me my check. I'm out. <laughs> well, y'all grew up by then. Y'all was like adults. <laughs> you know, middle. Uh, not. <laughs> Joe Marie, that's the show. Joe Marie, we had a different mama. <laughs> I'm so mad that you remember that show and that's your favorite because I think that was one of my worst actress time points ever. Can I tell y'all why that's like my favorite show? Because I watched Family Matters from the time I was eight. I was born in 80, so 89 to like 95. So I missed a lot of like the, the later shows because I was in the streets then. I was 16. So I was running on Friday right. nights. I went on that home. So all of a sudden, I started watching it again before it became on Hulu. I started catching reruns, and I started catching the later episodes, and I didn't see those live. That, so I'm like, that, was, that was like the worst acting. But it was like a whole new show to me then. So I'm like, wait a minute. Where's Waldo? Maxine is dating dope boys, and, and Eddie's a cop making busts. I'm like, wait a minute. What the What's going like that wasn't the family matters I was used to watch. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened here? So it made me start watching it again. And I've been like, huh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, wait a minute. And I thought it was a good show. So first of all, I've known Christoph since I was like seven, right? Yeah. And the fact that I had to kiss him in that episode totally just threw me off. Darius was like, no tongue. I don't want to see that. It was tough. I dated actual doughboys at the time, and Chris <laughs> was like the furthest thing in the world from a drug dealer. Yo. <laughs> and, and in order to be an actress, like you have to believe what you're doing. I was supposed to cry. I couldn't cry. Darius is standing next to me in a cop uniform. <laughs> For that to be your favorite episode, that was like my worst acting probably ever. Hey, hey, look, no, you, 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 you pulled, you really did, you did, you, you, you uh, with all those circumstances which they're not privy to and the audience doesn't understand, you pulled through, and your hair was so bangy, girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Girl, you were so fly, girl. I'm trying to tell you, man. And you was represented black, excellent, like a, <laughs> it was <I'm> black. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Okay, now, um, to credit what you're saying, these are the things that have been pushed on us yeah. throughout the years as far as content is concerned. This is the stuff, and then as actors, we have to go in and audition for this stuff and hope that we can get some fish. Mm -hmm. We fish it. That's what an audition is. But this is the stuff that has been pushed on us to push on y'all, and we don't create this stuff. But y'all associate us with that shit. 
So, 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 and I'm, and I'm calling it out. It's shit. It's been so much shit throughout the years. We've been eating shit, shit music, shit yeah. movies, shit, shit, shit. And these people know they long for producing this stuff. But, 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 you know, everything that's great is not what we're, we're getting. We're, we're in this, this, this capitalist vacuum. That's yeah. what this thing is. Listen, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Part of the reason Family Matters was even created was because there was a show called The Cosby Show. And there was a bunch of black ad buy dollars. Ad yes. buy for the audience out there who doesn't know what that is. Those are all of the products that you see in between commercial breaks. Like that's why television now, you guys, is in trouble because you guys don't watch the commercials. And so the people mm. who pay for the programming are a bit upset with you people. Yeah. They don't like you fast forwarding through, you know, when 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 um craft macaroni and cheese comes on and 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 when a uh, cheer comes on and and when Nutella comes on. They don't like you fast forwarding through the commercials. But there was a bunch of black ad buy dollars that ABC was missing. And so they decided to to create a black family for you guys because they wanted to push all those products on you to buy. Yeah. So we're the biggest consumers. You're, you're the biggest consumers because you guys love to go and purchase and, and buy all those white products um, <laughs> that are produced by, by white companies. The black people, even in the commercials, when you see black people in the commercials, we have nothing to do with that stuff. So once again, back to, 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 to sustaining economic power, if we really understood how much power that we have, we would really be able to have the power. Yeah. <laughs> all for all of us to come together and unite. Because I always say when they feel that economical shift happen, and it will happen. It's just a matter yeah. of us all coming together and deciding we are going to unite and we're going to do this. How do yes. we get people to agree on doing it? And what do we need to do to facilitate it happening? Uh, I think it's just all about baby steps, I believe. Um, you know, um, you don't have to think uh, huge because we are fighting a giant. Uh, but David was able to fight Goliath, number one, because he was fearless. Um, and number two, because he went about it in an unconventional way. So I think that it's not about us trying to figure out how we're going to create some grocery store. Start off by supporting my uh, We're going to shop where your groceries are. And let's support our Latino brothers and sisters. You'll find that the products are better. They treat you better. It's a better store. It's a better, it's a better market. The food, everything is better. The produce and the meat are phenomenal. And the Go buy our stuff. And then you start to, to, to get concepts. Okay, how can I do this? And then we find out the things that are available to us. And we have to learn to listen to each other. And we have to learn to put each other on, too. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that you brought up Riarta because it is a Hispanic store. And I really have been trying. I tried to reach out to the Brown Berets. I tried to reach out to the Black Panther Party. I'm just going to put it out there. They don't want to have anything to do with me. They considered me media. But my whole purpose was I felt like if we come together the way we had in the past, like Mexico never closed their borders when um, the slaves needed refuge. They let us in. So if we yep. band together as, as Brown, and that's not leaving out Filipinos, our Asian community, if, if the Browns yep. In the Muslims, you know, we band together. We're so strong. Yeah, and that yeah, the black brown get in. Yes, and I love that you brought that up. Like, how do we bring in our other brown brothers and sisters? I, I just think, I just think it's by example, right? It's just by example. I think that, like, once we start seeing it, and once they see it, you know, it's taking time. You know, within our community, you know, um, you know, what you've done for years to learn Spanish. I mean, and then we're not those people. We don't have that privilege. Like, don't you speak you know, speak English? Do you speak it? Like, we're not the, the, we're not we're not that we're not that. And I think that by taking time to sharpen our minds, to to be able to work on our communication skills, um, you know, um, 
And I think that just by leading, leading by example, take the time to go to a, a, a Ranch 99 market. Take the time and, and go to a, 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 a um, what's the other one? There's Vallarta and then there's another one. Um, but anyway, my point is just that right there. Just yeah. those, that right, right there, man. Um, it's just such a huge bit in the game because it covers so much. Back, one, of, one of my favorite posts that I saw is posting this girl um, who works for Amazon and she was cracking up because on the, the, the day of economic um, uh, the blackout, uh, it was like only a thousand packages that went through uh, Amazon. And she was cracking up. She was like, usually it's thousands of packages. She was like, it's only a thousand packages on Tuesday. You guys did it. It is a white girl. Oh, that's amazing. So I did, wow, that's the first time I heard that. So it and really you know, did work. You know what? Something else. I love that you said that it was a white girl because I was on the phone with Michael the other day. Michael lives in Boston. Michael has black children, but Michael is not black. And Michael said that what he hates is there's so many alliances that the black community has out there, but for whatever reason, they don't use their voice to be heard. And I said, I, you know what the, the bad thing is, is I think that white people, they're like, well, we didn't have anything to do with the hardship of black people. We don't want you to apologize. It's not necessarily that we want you to do anything. We just want you to speak up. Like, what has the conversations been like behind closed doors between you, Darius? Because we have a lot of friends who are not black. What has the conversations been with you, with your non-black friends? Um, for you know, in, in, in close door behind closed doors and um, sort of closed circles, um, it's been very supportive. Um, and and uh, I, I love the, the the support that I've been receiving. Uh, and the genuine support. Now, there's some that's been ingenuine, um, and there's some people um, in the industry who are only um, uh, speaking on it because they've been hit, um, and they haven't been able to move now with COVID. Right. And so their business is a hit. And so, you know, um, they're trying to, you know, gear a lot of their black entertainers up to get ready to go back out and fish once again. You know, um, so... Uh, you know, it's been a lot of ingen- in, in, in genuine, but there's been a lot of genuine support coming from from a lot of uh, uh, people in high places uh, who are light skinned, and I'm not I'm saying uh, are faded because white is not right. We are all black. There is no white. We're all black. We all come from a black a black source. A black woman is where we all come from. Um, my, my, my white brothers and sisters, all they are is faded. They are faded black people. That's what they are. So, um, yeah, the support from, from my faded light skin, uh, 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 brothers and sisters has been really, really cool. Um, the empathy, um, and, and, um, it's, it's been, uh, it's been touching. It has, because they have the power to change racism. We do not. If black people had the power to change racism, it would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, I mean these laws and this stuff, this systemic stuff, this stuff was put in place to kill us, to kill us off, to keep us under control. Even the guy that most of y'all pray to. I'm, I'm listen. I, I was raised in the church, okay? Evangelists, bishops, and all that stuff in the family, and reverends, and this and that, all of that stuff. If you be a good, if you, you need to tell me if you be good and you pray to Jesus, you gonna go to heaven. I'm going to say this. Faith is a very important instrument. It's just that what's in these books has been misconstrued and, and it's been written to control us. Yeah. Like, even down to the fact that the SS Jesus was a ship that was notorious for bringing slaves yeah. in, uh, over through the passage. And we were told that Jesus was going to take you to heaven because yeah. Jesus was the ship that brought you over here. A lot of us don't even know that, but yet we stay going to trip praying for something that that we can't get through prayer. We can get something else through prayer and meditation, something else that we need to fight this 
this this form of evil and wickedness, but not that. <laughs> you're on it tonight, boy. You on it? What else? What else you got for him, Courtney? We didn't have him on for a long. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I don't need to keep him on like that. Well, uh, this is my last question. Get it out, baby. And I and I and I, and I asked Cherry this off, but I'm gonna ask you this: How proud of you? How proud are you of Cherry Johnson? My wife, she has been a trailblazer. She she started off. There were no no yeah. black girls. Okay, so she's an icon. She's an icon. I want some real shit. Let's be let's be real. Like like y'all knew who Cherry was before you knew who Laura went. Laura was. Let's right. be for real. It's just like it's just like like Kim Fields. Kim to continue working and continue doing what she's doing to. to Evolved into being a, a black female director in the game, which she is. Cherry's produced movies, you guys. Like, she's produced films. Like, so I'm godly proud of her. It's amazing. I'm just, I'm just so, so, so thankful that she puts up with me. Uh, it's so funny. She, she, she be asking me, she said, okay, so she be telling me, we doing this, this up for the podcast on this time. I said, okay, fine. Why are you asking me? You always tell me what to do anyway. Okay, I'm doing what you say. Okay, fine. Whatever, whatever you want. That's so, you can control your own career. That's I, I appreciate it. I do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey like, even, even back in the day, she, she'd be telling me, you know, she'd be like, why is it taking you so long to write this song? She's like, do you need some help? I'm like, no, I got this. Let me just, I'm, I'm going through something. Let me. It's coming, I promise you. You know, but she gets it done. She I gets it done. And I have no patience, and I hate waiting. But Courtney, like, what he doesn't understand, he says, I put him on. <laughs> Courtney, you're the one that told me that I needed a podcast. You produce podcasts. Like, Yeah, but it was, it, I you didn't produce? know it was going to be like this. <laughs> I mean, she's just. Hey, y'all, y'all are smacking. I'm talking about when I see the, you know, when I see, you know, the different a- a- advertising and, and, when I see, you know, once it's put together and everything, and I look at it, and I just, I just smile, and I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all haven't even seen nothing yet. I mean, like for real. I mean, yeah. she, she, she's, she gonna keep on smacking them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let me out this house. Make sure they let me out this house. I'm ready. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, man. She got. It's gonna be some, some big is gonna happen for her. Watch. Like I'm talking about yeah. for us. For well, all I mean, three of us, big well, things are coming for all three of us. Because of that yeah. attitude right there, I'm talking about her, and she makes sure she says us. That, I'm not used. See, Darius, I'm not used to being around people like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was around some. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was right, though. See, that's that's called growth. Yeah. And we're gonna keep on growing until we grow up out of this. Right. That's what growing up is. Yeah. Growing up. We grown up now. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. stuck Courtney all in a matrix of a family matter and ain't even figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is the last question there. Last question. Did you, okay. what, what what did you ever release that song you and Shanice did? No, man. I didn't, man. I, I didn't. Um and I've been threatening Shanice to go back in and cut that and for us to do that, man. God I, uh, that's something that, that is that's coming. We we we're working on that. I, I didn't even know what I was writing when I was writing back in the day like that. I didn't even know, you know. Um, but, but, but we're gonna do we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. That's what happened. Can can I have a request too? Since we're throwing requests out there, yeah. Huh. Um, people so much chemistry with you and Tracy Spencer. Mm. I think that it's worth you know. In the night in the studio with her and doing something there as well. No, um, in the studio. Yeah, no, nah, that, that would be awesome. Uh, only problem is anybody seen you know, anybody really been able to get Tracy back in the studio. I, I think that she's just you know kind of outgrown the business, you know. Um, yeah, but I think if anyone could do it, it could be you. Wow. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> We've had a thousand a day, you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna think about that one. I'm really gonna think about that one. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that would be great. She was just so amazing uh, and iconic as well when it, when, you know, it came to the mold of 
um, um, uh, the the African American female artist, uh, her and Chinese, they were they they, they kicked in so many doors and created so many molds. Uh, yeah. From Aaliyah, I mean, oh yeah. I mean, that's where that's where it started, you know. So maybe, you're right, maybe you're right. you use me when you when you talk to Tracy and be like, "Look, Cherry says that she can't sing. I can't. <laughs> like we know, right? So I need Tracy to go in and be my voice and like make love to you on a record. Because I can't. Uh, and y'all hear? You see? Y'all hear? See? If your wife don't support you like this, then you ain't got the right one. Baby. You got the right wife. You ain't lying. Yes. You ain't lying about it. All right, that. so we're putting it out there. That's one of the things that we're going to work on, okay? We're putting that out there, y'all. Y'all heard it first here on Cherry's World Podcast. <laughs> Love you, baby. Hey, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is the official Cherry Johnson. That way you never miss one of our Cherry's World podcasts.